What's up guys, Sean here, and today I wanna to go over a story that I just found out about that is very near and dear to my heart. And although I'd never asked this at the beginning of any videos that I've ever done unironically or unsarcastically, I would appreciate that after watching this video, if you could actually share this out for me because it is a very important topic that I want to get the word out about. Have you ever scrolled through the backlog of Netflix, Amazon Prime, or the video section of iTunes and noticed that there's a lot of strange content on all of these platforms? Have you ever wondered how that content gets there? What is that content? Now, chances are when you come across the content that I'm referring to on all these streaming services, you're actually looking at independent content, either put together by independent filmmakers or an independent filmmaking company. And today, what I want to talk to you guys about is a recent controversy about a company that's job is to put that content on those streaming platforms. You see, one of the things that people just don't realize about independent filmmaking is that independent filmmaking from a business standpoint is a complete and total nightmare for the filmmaker. Now I'm gonna throw some numbers at you so you guys can get a general sense of what I'm talking about, but independent filmmakers spend a total of $3 billion a year to finance their own projects. The average independent film costs the filmmaker about $100,000, and only 2% of independent films actually make their money back. And one of the biggest issues that an independent filmmaker faces is distribution. I can make 100 videos just covering the horror stories related to bad distribution contracts or distribution contracts that rip the filmmaker off, or what seem to be good distribution contracts but the company that actually is handling the distribution not abiding by that contract and the filmmaker having no money to hire a lawyer, having no recourse to get the money that they are contractually owed. But that's not the only way an independent filmmaker can get screwed over in terms of distribution. Another way that filmmakers get screwed over in terms of distribution is that all of these streaming services require that independent film submissions must go through an aggregating company in order to have their works appear on their platform. Now, up until very recently, one of the silver linings of distribution for independent filmmakers was a company called Distribber. Now, unlike many other distribution companies, Distribber did not compromise the filmmakers' rights to their work. They promised filmmakers that they would receive 100% of the revenues earned from being on these streaming platforms, because Distributor actually made their money from a one-time $1,500 fee and then an annual fee of about $150 a year for every year following that. Now for an independent filmmaker who may have signed a bad distribution deal in the past, for somebody who's just trying to get their foot in the door of the industry, or for someone who just wants their work to be seen on a mainstream platform, Distributor sounded like a godsend. All you had to do was pay the one-time fee and then pay the annual fee, upload your video onto the platform, your film onto their service, let them do a quality check to make sure it was acceptable enough to sell to these streaming services, and you would earn all the money associated with it. In terms of distribution mechanisms for indie creators, this was incredibly low risk with the potential to have great rewards. However, as many of you likely could already guess, if the story of Distributor was just that it's a silver lining in what is all in all a crappy industry that doesn't give independent filmmakers a fair chase, then I probably wouldn't be bringing it to you as a news story. Well, it turns out that the content aggregation company that had a business model that appeared to be too good to be true was actually too good to be true, and the company recently went bankrupt, and since Distributor, which supposedly was giving 100% of the revenues to the filmmakers, was also handling all of the transactions from the filmmakers, stopped paying the filmmakers. In order to get a movie on digital, and I don't care who you are, like if you wanna get your movie on iTunes, whatever, I don't care if you're Steven Spielberg, Fox Studios, whatever, you gotta go through these gatekeepers for some reason, the digital platforms came up with this business plan to have these guys called aggregators handle all, handle all the movies, all of them, okay? And what they do is they check the movie for quality control, okay? And then they encode it for that particular platform. And for some reason, which makes zero sense, 
they're also responsible for collecting each film's revenue. So now we're in a situation where the content creators, the filmmakers who played by the rules, they followed the instructions, they paid all of their fees on time, their content appeared in the backlogs of all these major streaming services and their content has made money for these streaming services are now completely out of luck and not getting paid. I submitted a couple films to for my clients there and it'd been months before I, I had heard anything back and they, my movies were still not up on the platform, but they were still charging me uh, monthly, which was quite nice of them. And uh, they just basically said, listen, um, I'm sorry, but w you should probably go with someone else now. And I'm like, what, what do you mean goes with someone else? Like, yeah, you should probably go with someone else because we're not uh, able to give you an exact date for when these films are going to go up. And I was just really perturbed, really angry. And I'm like, you guys have been charging me and this and that. And basically they said any refunds that you want or any words on payment, you will have to go to a, a company that we have contracted uh, to re help us reorganize our finances. And now worse, it appears that the company that these people trusted, Distribber, and their parent company, Go Digital, are now using the money that they're withholding from the filmmakers, the money that is promised owed to those filmmakers to hire bankruptcy lawyers in order to keep money away from those filmmakers. Now look, this bothers me for a number of reasons, and I'm just going to run through them right quick for you. First of all, the reason this channel exists is because I was working at a job after I graduated college where the people who promised to pay me did not pay me on time the way that they should have paid me. Number two, I learned everything I needed to know in order to make this channel that you guys are watching, what equipment to buy, how to shoot it, how to get good audio from a video production class that I took in college. Now, while I decided to pursue a career in YouTube, a lot of my friends from that production class, including one incredibly close friend to me, decided to go into independent filmmaking. In fact, when I stopped uploading videos in the middle of summer of 2018 on this channel, the reason I stopped uploading videos is because I was working with this specific friend on an independent film project that he was really passionate about. Now, I know for a fact that my friend is completely unaffected by this. I'm not sure about the other people that worked on the film and maybe some of the other projects that they worked on if they were affected by this, but that's not the point. The point is, is that the people who work on these productions are volunteers and those those who aren't volunteers are likely losing money trying to produce content for these platforms. And it doesn't have to be this way. All of these companies require that independent filmmakers go through content aggregators. They require that you go through these shady companies in order to have a chance to appear on these platforms. And every single movie has to do this. So all you out there making fun of us that went with Distributor Go Digital, this could happen to you, and it may have happened to you, and you just don't know it because your distributor may have went through Go Digital or Distributor. You don't know. And they don't need to do that. You think that Amazon, Netflix, and iTunes can't either separately or come together to make their own aggregation company? You think that they can't charge an annual fee, do a quality check to make sure that the content is good enough to be on their platform? and make sure that the filmmakers that are lucky enough to get on their platforms actually get the payment that is due to them. They actually get what they're owed, what they're promised. You think they can't screen any of these aggregators that they mandate independent filmmakers must go through to appear on their platforms? Of course they can, but they don't because they don't care. As long as Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, iTunes, they make their money and their income is okay, your money is somebody else's problem. Look, I don't know what to do. Obviously, this one YouTube video isn't going to fix the major distribution problem for independent filmmakers in this country and across the world, because while a lot of the independent stuff across these streaming platforms is really weird and some of it is straight up garbage, there's also a lot of gems hidden amongst that garbage. And it sucks to know when you're watching something that's really good made by a passionate independent filmmaker that there's a good chance that the very streaming service that you're watching it on has set up a system that definitely ripped off that filmmaker. I'm gonna leave a link to the D for Darius video where I first found out about this story, and I'm also gonna leave a link to a podcast done by Indie Film Hustle that talks about ways that independent filmmakers can protect themselves from this company and their bankruptcy. 
I don't really know what the solution to this is. I don't really know what you can do if you want to help these independent filmmakers. But if there is something that can be done to help these independent filmmakers who got screwed over by this company, I'm sure Indie Film Hustles podcast will have information related to that because he's been really on top of this story. And if I find something separate from that, I'll also link that in the description box of this video. Anyway, you guys know the drill. That's all I really have for you guys today. My social media accounts are linked in the description box, the support links, all that jazz, t-shirts, 10% off promo code, whatever. Till next time.